grace and peace to you on this day. In God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So, when something is impossible, and then all of a sudden it's possible, better open your mind because God is probably involved. What is impossible becoming possible. That is what God does. Before we get to Mary, a quick uh, brief back to the first reading from 2 Samuel. You had David, King David, living in the land. The people had lived there for centuries, but still hadn't been really settled yet. And you hear this prophetic word come from Nathan, speaking for God. I will establish a line for you forever, a house, a kingdom. <laughs> Sounds impossible after all he's been through, wars and enemies at every corner. And yet that is what is possible. God is in the midst of it. Centuries later, it's a promise almost forgotten, at least by the world. You have Rome dominating the scene, that powerful empire, the superpower of its day, seemingly invincible. They say that uh, Rome really only started to decline after they built the Hadrian's Wall against Scotland. It was the first admission that maybe there were limits. Until then, no limits. Rome was that powerful. And here you have Mary, little Mary, young Mary. You have uh, a civil war in Rome after Caesar is killed. Remember your Shakespeare. And Caesar Augustus takes over, the most powerful man in the world, living in the eternal city. They even call him son of God. And yet, you have this promise. To this young girl, probably no older than some of our confirmation students. Greetings, favorite one. The Lord is with you. Don't be afraid. You will have a son. Name him Jesus. It means he'll save. He'll be son of the Most High. He will be the son of God. And Mary has a great response. What? <laughs> Do not be afraid. The Holy Spirit will come. What is impossible, God is now making possible. The God bearer, Mary. The church continues in that line. It started with a ragtag bunch of people. They seemed ins against insurmountable odds, couldn't do anything right even as they followed Jesus, followed him to his death, ran away. The women came and said, he's alive, he's risen, he's back. The Holy Spirit came to them, too, to be God-bearers, to go to the ends of the earth. I don't know if they went to the ends of the earth, but they told some people. Some people told other people. They told other people. So somebody told you. And me. It sounds impossible. God makes it possible. We have this uh, feeling today. It's what we've been talking about in these adult forums over the last few weeks. Like we're being pushed out, marginalized, unimportant, irrelevant in the world's eyes. Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. You and I are called, just like Mary, to bear Christ in the world. Sounds impossible, right? When God makes promises, anything is possible. I saw it this summer when I was in Uganda for a couple of weeks. A place in the world that seems pretty insignificant. People that seem unimportant, at least on the world's stage. Doing small things by the world's standards. But here you had a little community of people in a village that's not even on the map. A school for young girls, 500 of them gathered there. Building a second school. 
living their faith, not just among themselves, but in their community and among their Muslim neighbors, helping out where they, they can. <coughs> Run by these nuns. We need Lutheran nuns. These women <laughs> Humble, yet uh, forceful, yet everything you want in a leader. Sounds impossible. God uses us to bear Christ in the world. I told you before about our sending off and St. Gazito dancing around. Uh, but before that, the evening before, we had a, a time to be together for an evening prayer service. And the power was out. The power was always out. <laughs> we, we had the church illuminated and there were a few candles, let's just say four because it's Advent. And then the power went out and that was it. So you had a, a room of about five, six hundred people and four candles in the darkness. And a few people were asked to say something about their experience uh, with them. And a few people did. And I was asked to say something as well. And when it was my turn to speak, I said, you know, I've been sitting in the dark. I've been sitting in the dark all week and uh, and I've been thinking, you know, when Jesus says, if you have a light, you don't put it under a basket, right? The girl's like, oh, yeah, of course not. And so what do you do with it? And so when you lift it up, that way people won't trip. People will find the footing. They can find the way. The Christian faith used to be called the way. We're given that light to carry around, to bear Christ in the world. It sounds ridiculous. It sounds impossible. The odds are insurmountable. But when God makes a promise, anything's possible. This week I saw two moments that I thought were wonderful when I think about bearing the light in the world. Wednesday I got to work with our group of people who were helping out at the soup kitchen. I thought, this was great. Everybody was happy. People were doing something for others. Connecting with people, sitting with them, talking with them, making wonderful food. I was taking a plate from somebody at the end. I said, did you enjoy your meals? She said, we like it when the loot comes. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do that all on our own. Friday night, I got to see the other side of it, this benefit concert in town for the Shoreline Soup Kitchen. And we had a great representation there, but it wasn't just us. Other churches were there, other groups were there. A business was there. One guy who runs a business said, the last few years I've uh, decided what to do is everybody that buys a ticket for this event, I'm gonna, I'm gonna double the money and just kind of do that. And then he reflected that over the course of the last 10 years doing the soup kitchen together, all of us together, uh, had raised close to a million dollars. Now if you sat down and say, okay, let's start a soup kitchen and raise a million dollars. That sounds impossible. Think of all the different little groups thinking about that same thing. But together, when that light comes together in one place, when we join what God's already doing and we participate in it, boy, that impossibility seems really possible, doesn't it? Now, in a few days, in the evening, we're going to gather here again. I, I hope there's power. But as part of that service, we're all going to get a candle. We're all going to stand. We're all going to sing Silent Night. It's one of those beautiful moments of Christmas that just seems to bring it all together, doesn't it? When we do that, it's not just going to be us. We'll have the people that are here all the time. We'll have the people that have never come before. What I want you to think about on Christmas Eve with your candle is not just being in a church singing your favorite song and how wonderful it is. Think about that light you're holding. The light of Christ you've been given. Greetings, favorite one. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid. What if we actually expected God to do something with us? Start with one girl in a far off place that didn't seem to matter. And yet here we are all here, gathered again, hearing the story, holding on to the promise, looking in the darkness for some inkling of light to come. What might happen if we share that light? If just one person, if just you, shared that light? 
One could become two, and two could become four, and four could become eight, and 16, and 32, and 64. Let me do my math. 128, 256, 512, 1,024. A few moves from one to a thousand sounds impossible. Possible. Imagine a couple hundred people doing that. It starts with one person. It starts with hearing the promise again. It starts with the message of God. Greetings, favored one. Do not be afraid. You will have a son. You will be called the son of God. You and I are empowered, just like Mary, to bear that promise into the world. God can do it with one person, long ago. What will God do with you now? The impossible?